Warning, this episode contains material that may not be suitable for children. Seriously, we're going to be quoting the Bible in this one. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Hymns, Honey, Stamps.com, and by The Fact That You'll Always Have Made More Money Than Cats. You'll Always Have Made More Money Than Cats. It's a little bit better. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Good news, everyone. You're listening to one of the only podcasts to serenade you with a heathen right behind the mic, growling the day of the week over the emanations of Martian giraffes. You have excellent taste. Oh, and we did in fact evolve from Filthy Monkey Men. It's January 9th. And it's National Word Nerd Day. Ooh, ooh, may all your crosswords end in Nicodonia. I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Grover Cleveland's New Jersey, Cincinnati Swing State, and Good Husband Georgia, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, the Methodist Church finally gets around to reading the Bible. Heath heavily considers converting to Christianity for the flying. And we'll learn that schisms just ain't what they used to be. But first, the diatribe. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says that he sees God through a glass darkly, which is a pretty weird turn of phrase to the modern ear, but it made a hell of a lot more sense when he said it. Saying that back in the 0050s would be a lot like saying that you saw God through a funhouse mirror today. See, glass has been around pretty much forever. Our earliest archaeological records show that it was already being made in and around Egypt in 3500 BCE, but for most of its history, glass was by necessity imperfect. Right? The, the colorless, fully transparent glass that you think of when I say glass today, that wasn't invented until the 15th century. A Venetian dude named Angelo Barovier gets credit for that, for what he called Cristallo. But in truth, it's hard to pin down to like one inventor, right? Like Venice had been the glass making capital of Europe for centuries by then. And generations of Venetian glass blowers had been slowly moving towards that perfected form for a long time. And look, a solid argument can be made that this represents the single most important invention in human history. You know, usually that honor goes to something like uh, the printing press or fire or computers or something. But it is hard to overstate what a world changer clear glass really was. It, it allowed for the perfection of lenses. So everything we ever found using a telescope or a microscope owes its discovery to transparent glass. Right there, we've revolutionized astronomy and biology. But clear glass is just getting warmed up. Right. Like some form of eyeglasses had existed for a couple hundred years by then, but they only provided distorted and imperfect views. They were hard to use. Once you have fully transparent glass, you can make spectacles that maintain perfect fidelity. That meant scholars could continue to read into their old age. I mean, as a guy in his mid 40s, I can tell you that is not the case in nature. Right. So before you basically had a time limit on your academic studies, you, you get to be my age or a little older and you, you have to stop reading. You know, maybe you could talk a young person into reading stuff to you, but obviously that's a subpar solution. But toss in modern eyeglasses and suddenly people can learn more. Like the sum total of information that can be taken in through one's lifetime is higher. Clear glass literally allowed us as a species to become wiser. Uh, beyond that, the increasing ubiquity of glass allows uh, people to do shit that requires daylight indoors under natural light. I mean, think about all the scientific experiments and shit that would be impossible to do under firelight or in the near dark. But wait, there's more. I know this is going to seem like a bit of a stretch, but clear glass also allows us to make mirrors that don't cloud the image or add any distortion. Right. Like silver backed mirrors change the way we perceive ourselves and did so all but universally. When silver-backed mirrors show up in a society, you see a consistent trend towards individuality. You can actually measure it in increasing awareness of fashion. Hell, many historians have postulated that the introduction of modern mirrors is a direct cause for the rise of psychology as a science. Now, back when Paul was writing his epistles, the idea of looking through a glass and not seeing a distorted image was unthinkable. So when he says he sees through a glass, whether or not it's darkly, he's saying he's seeing an imperfect image. 
right? Adding the darkly is really just there to emphasize that fact. He's saying, I see a vague outline and I'm inferring the rest. But unlike the rest of the things in the universe, God never came into focus even when we cleaned up the glass, right? Back in Paul's day, we saw everything through a glass darkly. The semi-mystical ramblings that passed for science back then were looking at the whole goddamn world through that same imperfect glass. But thanks to some dedicated motherfuckers in Venice, over time, we learned to see further, deeper, and clearer. We learned how to see the invisible. Paul saw through a glass darkly because he had no choice. What's the modern Christian's excuse? They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the life and liberty to my pursuit of happiness, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, how does it feel to be unalienable? Uh, it was pretty self-evident, yeah. I guess, I feel. Yeah. Hey, you can Sacred always buy animal. Heath and Ale, Noah. Don't be so hard on yourself. What? All right, well, I try to sort that joke out. We're going to pause for a word from our first sponsor this week, Hymns. Un- unalienable. Oh. It's better what? when you read it. No. Is it? I'm reading it. (laughs) Hey, Beef, what are you Mm. what are you doing? Oh, this uh, this is my New Year's resolution. Your your New Year's resolution is to dig some holes. No, no. My New Year's resolution you know, is uh, that I'm going to find. Science shows that when you make a New Year's resolution. Nobody cares what science says. Boo. Anyway, my New Year's resolution is to find buried treasure so what about you eli oh I- i'm gonna stop losing my hair oh really um how are you gonna do that forhims.com what's forhims.com forhims.com is a one-stop shop for hair loss skin care and sexual wellness for men you're getting hair pills from a website Dude, you're going to turn blue at best. Uh, with most websites, that might be true, Heath. But with 4 you get prescription solutions backed by science. Eli, you need to see a doctor to get a prescription. That's true. 4 connects you to real doctors online, which could save you hours. Plus, it's completely confidential and discreet. That sounds easier than digging. So that's good. All right. How do I try? Well, you can dive into 2020 hair first. Right now, our listeners get started with their first month free. Go to forhims.com slash scathing. That's forhims.com slash scathing. Prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Offer valid only if prescribed three month minimum subscription. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's forhims.com slash scathing. Plus, you're digging in the sandbox at the park. Boo, nerd. Boo, boo. No, 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 that's that's fair. That's that's fair. That's what I'm doing. (laughs) <laughs> and now back to the headlines in our lead story tonight the centuries old project of perpetually splitting the protestant wing of christianity until each person has their own denomination continued this week when we learned that the united methodist church <laughs> the second largest protestant denomination in the u.s is about to become smaller than that thanks to their inability to agree on which vulnerable and underprivileged minorities god hates ah <sighs> yeah Wow, they literally had a meeting about ranking the minorities. Yep. <laughs> that happened. Yeah. And they landed at an impasse. They couldn't figure it out. Hey, I get it. Split. Heath and I got stuck on ranking the Nordic peoples. We were up till like four in the morning. <laughs> all right, moving on. Yeah. All right, so, okay, so this has been brewing for a while now as more progressive churches started inching towards morality by gasp ordaining gay people and double gasp performing marriages for them. It really came to a boil at a special session of the United Methodist General Conference last year with the approval of the traditional plan, which would formally bar LGBT clergy and ban gay marriages in UMC churches. And and I should point out that, like, nobody was proposing a rule where the churches would have had to perform gay marriage. Right. The proposal was that the individual churches could decide for themselves. And that was too much for the majority of Methodists. Yeah, so there were people making the federalism argument for slavery built into this argument, and Methodists landed to the right of that (laughs) politically. It's almost impressive. Right? Okay, my favorite part of this has been the so-called, like, woke good Methodists who've had to pretend for the last however many months that they never read the homophobic parts of the Bible. Yeah, right, right? (laughs) It says, what? 
Crazy. No. Or met the majority of Methodists. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> they said, what? Crazy. <laughs> no. Everybody has to have slavery. We're not doing <laughs> state by state. No. All right. Well, since then, there's been a lot of noise about a schism. Several UMC churches have left the fold and become independent, but that's not financially viable for most churches because even with no production costs or taxes, churches don't serve enough of a function to stay afloat without a big ass multinational conglomeration funneling money down to them. And it looks like they may have found a proposal that everyone can agree on, and they're calling it the, quote, protocol of reconciliation and grace through separation, end quote. <laughs> okay. Where do we keep our grace? Good question. Oh, no, it's, <laughs> it's right here in this separate but equal doctrine yes, that we have right. now. Yep. <laughs> also not really equal. Well, it's separate. 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's like saying you found a way to make your marriage work by getting divorced. <laughs> <laughs> so basically... Well. It would split the existing church into the UMC and the traditional, read, bigoted UMC. The new special bigot version would be seated with $25 million over four years because, sure, progressive Methodists don't care for bigotry, but not so much that they aren't willing to pay tens of millions of dollars to support it. <laughs> well, you know, they've been doing it for a while. Why change now? Yeah, so right. Much. Yes, exactly. Great job, guys. Get woke. <laughs> <laughs> and in Palms for the Poor news tonight, if you wouldn't let your mom or grandma play three card money or the three shell game once a month, then you should stop them from seeing your local palm reader or psychic. And we got a stark reminder of that this month when so-called psychic Tracy Milanovic was arrested and charged with larceny and intimidation of a witness in Somerset, Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. OK, so. If you need a quick method for telling which palm readers are harmless and which are dangerous charlatans, put a mirror under their nose. Yeah, that's a good test. Yeah. <laughs> and you will be looking at the nostrils of a dead or alive charlatan. Yeah, right. The dead <laughs> ones are, are harmless, but yes. Some would say helpful. It depends on what you're in. I don't want to get into it. Anyways, so quick reminder. Here's how palm readers don't make their money. Five dollar palm readings. Yep. Here's how they do make their money. They offer that $5 low price first reading to the general public who they then survey for marks because it's a scam. Then when they find someone they think will be vulnerable to their scam, someone old or someone who's lost a loved one or someone who's mentally ill, they tell that person that something is wrong with them and offer to fix it for the low, low price of however much money they can get out of them. Yep. But I mean, at least you get a hand massage. Mm -hmm. Churches do the exact same thing, but with nothing. You That's get fair. nothing. That right. is fair. Right. So Milanovic followed this formula and according to the Somerset Police Department, quote, convinced the victim that her daughter was possessed by a demon and that cash and household items were needed in order to banish the spirit from her daughter. And, and, and look, I, I get how shocking it is for most people to hear that yet another person fell for the your money is haunted. You better give it to me trick. But if we have learned anything in the last three fucking years, it's that those people comprise approximately 39 percent of the population with a margin of error of plus or minus two percent. Yeah. And palm readers uh. don't suddenly matter once every four years. So the police department continued saying, quote, Milanovic was found to have stolen approximately seventy one thousand dollars from the victim and the victim additionally purchased multiple household items for her like towels and bedding end quote what I, i'm not gonna lie i want to hear that pitch <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> right? you know i was trying to exercise your daughter the other morning but my towels are so scratchy i was just I was <laughs> distracted also this bed of seventy one thousand dollars cash is kind of scratchy too <laughs> Go get me some new sheets. <laughs> so, yeah, as easy and fun as it is for us to poke fun at the snake handling Christians. Again, for the cheap seats, no religion is true. No woo is real. And at worst, you are setting yourself up for a very expensive and very dangerous scam. And in Pan Frank news tonight. Right wing commentator and founder of Prager University, but only because the word university isn't legally protected. Dennis Prager <laughs> held a fireside chat on Facebook this week to answer viewer questions from his vast audience of boomers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First question is from listener Donald. It says. Which input is the VCR and which input is the cable? It's all in caps again. Okay. 
Donald, we just answered that. We need other questions. That's, it's, I'm flipping through. It's a lot of this. Okay. So one of the questions was in response to an op-ed penned by Prager earlier in the year in the Jerusalem Post titled, What Have Jews Learned from the Holocaust? Not Much, in which Prager claimed that, quote, at any time in history, the belief that people are basically good was irrational and naive. To believe it after the Holocaust is beyond irrational and naive. It is stupid, dangerous, and inexcusable. Yet most American Jews, I cannot speak for Israeli Jews, believe people are basically good, end quote. Yeah, no, the citation on that just said, see byline. <laughs> right, <laughs> so the question was given that only idiots and assholes think people are basically good. What did Dennis Prager think of Anne Frank, who was <laughs> literally experiencing the Holocaust while she wrote, now famous opinion, that people are really good at heart? The answer, of course, from Dennis Prager, the full grown adult, was fuck Anne Frank. <laughs> so it wasn't quite that indelicate. Here's Prager's actual response. Quote, I know she wrote that. And my answer is it doesn't matter that she wrote it. I don't get my wisdom from teenagers. <laughs> well, no, that is that is true. There is a long list of places where he does not get wisdom and people with <laughs> ages are on that list. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I get my wisdom from Prager. You here's a brochure showing a photo of our very diverse range of neck beards in the student body. Check it out. <laughs> he continues, quote, that she was a wonderful young woman and wrote an unbelievably powerful document that will last forever is besides the point. I don't expect 16 year olds Unless they grew up in a religious Jewish or Christian home, she was a secular Jew. Most kids believe that, but it is not true. But it has never been an issue with me. Well, you disagree with Anne Frank. So what? End quote. Not adding shit. I'm on the same side as the Nazis again. Why does this keep <laughs> happening? Oh, well. <laughs> I love how he inadvertently admitted that if she'd grown up religious, she would know people are mostly assholes. Indeed. Right? <laughs> right. Indeed she would. Also, the little mini <laughs> argument with himself. It's a hell of a quote. <laughs> Final note here. The most upsetting part of the video is that Dennis Prager has an adorable bulldog named Otto. And that is fucking bullshit. Assholes <laughs> should not get pets. Pets are for human <laughs> beings capable of kindness and compassion. Even their orange man understands not to get a dog. Unacceptable. <laughs> All right. Well, Clearly, Eli needs a minute, so we're going to take a break for a word from our second sponsor this week, <laughs> Honey. Free auto. Alone with my Oculus Quest at last. Hey, Noah, uh, sorry to bother you. Is this a good price for Q-tips online? Um, it, it looks fine. Cool. Thanks. All right. Hey, Noah, one other thing. Uh, is this a good price for Post-it notes? Yes, why are you asking me? Try Honey. Okay. Honey, is this a good price for no, post-it no, no. notes? Honey Weird. is the free online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart. Oh, yeah. I actually used Honey on my Christmas shopping this year. Saved a ton, and it was super easy to know if I got the best price whenever I shopped before I checked out. Exactly. In fact, Honey has found its over 18 million members over $2 billion in savings. That's a lot of post-it notes, Bay. It sure is. Using Honey feels pretty great. Think of it as a little daily victory. Plus, it's free to use and it installs in just a few seconds. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash scathing. That's joinhoney.com slash scathing. You'll be saving money and supporting the advertisers who support our show. Now, can I please use my Oculus in peace? Okay. I mean, I guess I can find a good price for tissues from Honey. Oh, no, that I have memorized by now. Okay. Because the Oculus. Yeah, no, we get it. A man wrote the Bible. A whore is what she was. If it's a legitimate rape. It is a slut, right? It, cooking can be fun. Hey, I'm proud of a man. This week in Massachusetts. I swear, I can't take time off anymore. I leave you guys in charge for two fucking weeks. And when I get back, my inbox is filled with stories about a Make Women Great Again conference in Florida. And I'm starting to think you guys let that happen just so that I wouldn't take another week off. So yeah, Mansplain Con 2020 is coming to Orlando from the people that brought us going to the mall in sweatpants and promises to teach women how to lose weight, land a husband, make babies, and avoid, quote, 
toxic bullying feminist dogma, end quote. See, according to their website, the problem with women these days is the feminists are teaching them to be like men. And if these assholes were a representative sample, I can see why that would be a problem. And if you want tickets to this all-male speaker lineup, you better act fast. Quick before they cancel it due to lack of interest. Tickets are only $1,999. But if you buy them now, they'll give you a 50% discount. Because the price is like their cocks. About half as big as they said it would be. Unless I make it sound like sexism is more stupid than deadly, I should also mention the guy in Delaware that was arrested for throwing an incendiary device at a Planned Parenthood. 18-year-old Samuel James Gulick was charged with intentionally damaging a building that provides reproductive health services and maliciously damaging a building used in interstate commerce through the use of fire or destructive device because Delaware has really specific laws. And apparently he was also charged with possession of an unregistered destructive device about five days earlier when he was caught with an IED outside a different Planned Parenthood. Now, luckily for everyone involved, he's all kinds of stupid. First of all, he spray painted a slogan on the side of the building before he threw the bomb in full view of their security cameras. On top of that, the bomb pretty much put itself out when it exploded, so there was minimal damage and nobody was hurt. But there's only so long we can count on their stupidity saving our asses. And look, it's not like the anti-abortion folks don't already know this is a byproduct of their rhetoric. Sure, this was the act of one single person, but everybody who has ever implied that abortion is murder shares in some of the blame. And they'll still share in it when the next idiot is successful and manages to actually kill people. But speaking of Planned Parenthood, I actually do have a little bit of good news to close on. According to Planned Parenthood's annual report, over the last couple of years, they performed a record number of abortions, up 4% from the previous two-year period. And look, I I get nobody is rooting for more abortions, right? Like, even the most ardent pro-choice advocates don't measure their success in the number of terminated fetuses. But given the draconian bullshit the GOP is doing to restrict access, it's a damn good sign to see that the number is still on the rise. And it also means more snacks at the next American Atheist Convention. And on that brief glimmer of good news, I'll wrap things up and hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Thank you, Lucinda. Next up in headlines, trans people is the subject of this sentence, Anna. What are the guys talking about? It's the newest, the greatest Christian freakout. That's right. Trans people exist and Georgia lawmakers are panicking especially because trans people are sometimes existing in the time dimension as children. (gasps) And according to the data, uh, just assume we played the little jingle again. According to the data, (laughs) when trans kids are provided with health care, like puberty blockers, for example, it leads to better health outcomes. Uh, Also, according to common fucking sense, health care causes better health outcomes. That's how (laughs) words work. And by better outcomes, I mean... Not death in many cases. Yeah. But regardless of that, Republican State Representative Ginny Earhart is planning to introduce a new bill that would make it a felony for doctors to provide this type of care. And without any hat tip to George Orwell, because that's a fancy reading book, the proposed legislation is called the Vulnerable Child Protection Act, because go fuck yourself. <laughs> but yeah, well, look, I... I- I don't mean to defend this woman at all. I am sure this is actually motivated by bigotry. But to be fair, we should point out that Georgia Republicans have a long and storied history of protecting children from health care, regardless of their gender <laughs> expression. So. That's true. They're just diving in front of a Z pack like the bodyguard. And I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for lack of a better word, here's the reasoning we got from Ginny Earhart. Who looks like the Grinch who stole forehead? My God, she does. (laughs) (laughs) So according to Earhart, kids in Georgia are being forced to become trans. Forced. Uh, Where are they? Which kids are those? Uh, Go fuck yourself. (laughs) Okay. Um, Apparently parents are creating a secret trans army by forcing their kids to get surgery, puberty blockers, and hormone therapy. So first of all... Nope, no. <laughs> the parents of Georgia are not carrying out a radical forced transition campaign. Or in the exact words of Ginny Earhart, quote, 
Children are being subjected to life-altering, irreversible surgeries and drug treatments that render them sterile and permanently disfigured. This sterilization and castration of children has no place in civil society. I'm an elected representative, end quote. All right. Well, like, look, this is all complete fucking bullshit. But, you know, if altering the genitals of children in irreversible ways without their consent pisses you off, I do have some ideas where you might want to look. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah, I was just, uh, furious as I was reading through this. So just a couple quick clarifications. Just in case anyone wasn't clear on this, trans health care for kids does not involve surgery. Nope. It does involve puberty blockers sometimes, which is something that's also used for cisgender kids sometimes as well. And that is reversible. And for people freaking out about surgery, this actually prevents the need for surgery in the future. Not that it's any of your goddamn business what people choose with their doctor. Yeah. Right. Also worth pointing out, not giving trans kids hormones is a decision for your trans kid. A, a right. very specific decision for them to go through puberty as a sex they don't identify with. Yep. And if you don't get why that's a bad thing, imagine if you woke up tomorrow with tits or a beard. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I do that all the time. But all right, so... <laughs> <laughs> Redacted, um, retracted. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as long as we're coming up with things that need to be felonies, it seems like introducing a bill that would criminalize evidence-based medicine would be a great new addition to the list of felonies. Seriously, this woman should go to jail. And her cell should have a trans-only bathroom policy. <laughs> <laughs> Two votes. And in Let the Lawsuits Begin news tonight. The days of mocking my soy nuggets. I love this story so much. The days of mocking my soy nuggets and textured beetroot jerky are over. No, they're and not. Not no. just because Heath's about to become a vegan. No. What? Because for the first time, a UK tribunal has ruled that ethical veganism deserves the same protections under anti-discrimination laws as religious beliefs. Because it is a philosophical None. system. That's right, bitches. You're going to jail. <laughs> no. Just Eli standing by himself in front of his vegan wedding cake shop. You can't have any murderer. You can't. He doesn't care. He doesn't. He's gone. He's gone. I did not think this through. I thought that would be more impactful to Very those people. They really don't care. Uh. One second. I had some of my own cake. Did you just uh. eat some of your cake? <laughs> no, that was... <laughs> That was a handful of kitty litter. Never mind. <laughs> so the case where this came up Vegan, isn't actually about veganism. Uh, a guy got fired. His company says it's because he sucks. He says it's because he objected to how his pension fund was being invested in companies that test products on animals. And that case has yet to be decided. However, during the course of the tribunal, the judge, a hero, made the broader ruling that I get to sue Noah and Heath for a million million dollars early. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I would point out that we're not UK citizens, but I'm keeping my options open until November 4th. I don't want to declare a country. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, you know. Smart. Smart. And what, you ask, dear listener, will I do with my time now that my rights as a vegan have been restored in the second best English speaking country? Vegan Kim Davis. Vegan Kim Davis. Great. Exactly. Think about it. Butchers, waiters, steak. Testing. There are a million jobs what? I can refuse to do on these grounds. <laughs> I am going to be so rich. So rich. Well, yeah, plus you do already look like somebody put clothes on a bell rug and you want to hold hands with Mike Huckabee. Tough but fair. <laughs> Tough but fair. No illusions. <laughs> and did one man band news tonight. As you're likely aware, fire got jealous of ice and decided it wanted its own continent, too. So it picked Australia. And there are already plenty of an area the size of X has already been burned comparisons out there. So I thought maybe this would be a, a better way to get your head around how fucking bad this is. At the time of this recording, those bushfires have taken out about one in every 160 acres of that continent. More than half a percent of a fucking continent has burned down. Yep. And as usual with a giant environmental disaster, Christian leaders were like, Yup, way too much gay sex down there in Australia. Wait, fuck. Was was a bunch of that us with, with kids? Yeah, right. Uh, there's a dedicated royal commission. <laughs> um, How dedicated? Smoke bomb. 
Our biggest guy? Well, there's your cause of the fire right there. Got our biggest <laughs> yeah, guy. right. <laughs> well, yeah, so uh, the liberal ivory tower elitists have blamed this on climate change in advance, right? Like they predicted it and told us it was going to happen and why it would happen and stuff. But all their bullshit numbers and science didn't fool Stephen Cooking Can Be Fun Anderson, who took to the Facebooks last Friday to explain that the real reason Australia is on fire is because God's still pissed at him for not letting Stephen Anderson into their country. And he's... <laughs> <laughs> Taking it out on the kangaroos and the sugar gliders, apparently. And I guarantee you, the moment a single one of these fires goes out, it's going to be like, that was us. You're welcome. You're yeah. welcome for the thoughts right, and prayers. Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. We'll let you know when we nail the rest we of those are. fires that go out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, wait. Fuck here's you. the quote from little Stevie. He posts a picture that shows all the spots where fires broken out over the last months or so. And he says above it, he says, quote, Maybe if Australia weren't banning and deporting preachers of the gospel, they wouldn't be under the judgment of God, end quote. Of course, if banning and deporting Stephen Anderson is the cause, we should expect to see fresh outbreaks of fire soon in <laughs> lots of places. Austria, Belgium, Botswana, Canada, the Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, Jamaica, Latvia, Liechtenstein, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, Malawi, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Slovakia, Slovenia, South Africa, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and the UK. Is that I'm sorry. Yep. Yes, yes. All 34 of those countries, plus Australia, have specifically banned that motherfucker Amazing. by name. Cut to Donald Trump desperately trying to figure out how to get Iran to <laughs> ban Stephen Anderson. Just, <laughs> And finally tonight, we might have finally found a news story that disproves atheism. Ooh, We've been doing really? this for years, so I guess it was inevitable. Had yeah. to happen, right? And this one is pretty conclusive during a recent episode of the show it's supernatural hosted by televangelist sid roth a pastor came on and told the story of a child who can fly what uh, yeah and before you ask it wasn't just regular you know secular flying <laughs> oh okay. this was god flying they were at a revival gathering and an atheist showed up to challenge the existence of god and God made a child fly right in the atheist's face. Yeah, <laughs> and that atheist said, wow, this is almost as disappointing as the New Mutants trailer. A horror movie? Seriously, can we have no fun ever again? Comic book movies, must we all dwell in the darkness forever of your Eli, life? Eli, we had a whole goddamn meeting. Fine. Okay? It's fine. I'm just hurt. <laughs> okay. Wanted to work that in. <laughs> all right. Well, back to the story. Uh, I'm a Christian now. Oh, okay. Um, barring any flaws you guys can find in this story. And I seriously <laughs> doubt you will. Here's how it all went down. They were having this youth camp revival meeting. And according to Pastor Andre Ashby, quote, the atheist came in and he said, okay, God, if you're real, have somebody fly tonight. <laughs> and so at the meeting, a young man who actually had a halo on because he just had surgery on his brain. The, the halo is a medical device for brain cutty stuff, I guess. Yep, mm -hmm, yep. So this kid, this kid had a halo on. Continuing the quote, the kid literally picked up and flew out down the halls. The doors swung open. He flew over the parking lot <laughs> and landed in the snow. End quote. So QED. Am I right, my Christian brethren? Right? No. <laughs> I love the fucking thought of this, right? So because... The kid is days off of brain surgery. So obviously there have been plenty of ignored prayers leading into this shit. You got to imagine the kids floating around going, no, no, yeah. Sending my brain tumor into remission would have been a whole thing. I got it. This is way more important. God, thanks for <laughs> tri tri tripping in now. But I floated even. Yeah. And uh, by the way, Squares. when asked about why God would drop a kid with recent brain surgery into a fucking snowman. <laughs> Pastor Ashby responded, well, here's the thing. Is that a commercial break? Let's hear about my pillow. Let's yeah, hear about my right. pillow. Great. And uh, Pastor Ashby also added, quote, this is for real. He really said this. So needless to say, that atheist is no longer an atheist, end quote. So again, before you ask, we cannot speak with this atheism apostate. He's a secret 
underground checkmated atheist, mm -hmm. no, keeping his identity hidden to protect him from the violent backlash. That's a very serious problem in the atheist community. When we get <laughs> but I have no doubt he's real. He's real. Oh, his name, you ask? Uh, mm -hmm. Richard? Don't say Dawkins. Rockins. His, his name is Richard Rockins? Yep, good old Ricky Raw, Christian now. <laughs> Big atheist before. <laughs> so... <laughs> I want that to be somebody's name. So, un unfortunately, nobody who watched this child fly managed to get even a few seconds on video. But mm. Sid Roth and his production team did put together some very accurate reenactments <laughs> of what happens when skeptics go to revival meetings and challenge God, including this they flying did. incident. Please watch this video. <laughs> Especially the one before the flying thing. Watch both. Watch a lot of It's Supernatural. But check out the one before the flying thing. We get to watch an atheist kid. <laughs> it starts, he's just hanging out on a lawn, drinking beers out of solo cups with his friends <laughs> like a typical atheist. And they make fun of him because he's about to head to a church gathering. And then when he arrives at the church, he gets violently assaulted by an angel. He does. In a good way, I guess. And he becomes a missionary. And this actor who's getting assaulted by nothing, he fucking went for it. Yeah. It is terrifying, but it's fantastic. It's like genuinely oh. good acting. Daniel Day Lewis. It's, it's, uh, it's like the logistics of the flying are so goddamn weird. They have all the other kids like following after him, but they keep having to open the doors to catch up with him. <laughs> so. Either he's also phasing or they just let him fly around for a while. And they're like, we should go check on Tim. <laughs> he flies out and like God closes the door behind him. So that they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, right. right chasing yeah. him out with a broom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And with that God awful micro, I guess we're going to close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Ricky, Ricky, raw. Ooh, ooh, Ricky was. <laughs> and when we come back, Don Ford will be here to help us fantasize about adventure. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm going to send everyone a fruit basket. Well, I'm going to hand deliver everyone a fruit basket. Gu guys, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Noah. Heath and I both made our New Year's resolutions to be more generous without going to the post office, of course. Without going to the post office? Yeah, I mean, the traffic, the lines, it's a whole yeah, thing. No, I get it. Why don't you guys just use stamps.com? What's stamps.com? Stamps.com brings all the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer. Whether you're a small office sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or even a warehouse sending out thousands of packages a day, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. That does sound convenient, but uh, we're kind of on a budget. We're buying a lot of fruit baskets. A lot. Well, that's okay. With Stamps.com, you get five cents off every first-class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. That's a lot of post-its. Yeah, still From is. the last ad. No, I, I, I get it. I get yep. it. So Nailed give it. yourself a resolution you can actually keep this year. Stop going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with our promo code scathing, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in scathing. That's stamps.com, promo code scathing. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. So, fruit baskets? They're mostly lemons. Mm. They're mostly lemons? Lemons are a fruit. Yeah. <laughs> Last time on Bible Peace Theater. So, we're agreed. You, the Gideons, will be our... Sl uh, 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 carriers of wood and water, and we, the Jews, led by myself, Joshua, will no longer not, not kill you. Okay, so you won't kill us? Yes. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Adana Zedek, uh, King of Israel? Uh, that's me. Who are you? Uh, I am your new assistant, Todd. Uh, just just mm. wanted to give you a heads up that the Gideons have made peace with the Jews. What? That, that's bullshit. We got to kick the shit out of those guys. 
The Jews? Because because they killed like everyone in, in Jericho and A, so... Oh. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, then, um, let's attack the Gideons. You mean the people I just told you made peace with the Jews? Yeah, they, they won't attack us for attacking their allies. I mean, how bloodthirsty can the Jews possibly be? Oh, an opportunity to kill some people. I am in. Uh... I just walked in the room. I haven't said anything yet. <sighs> okay, well, what do you want then? Oh, uh, the king of Jerusalem is attacking the Gideons, uh -huh. and we were wondering if you would be An opportunity to... to kill some people? Boy, I'm in! Yep, checks out. What do you mean you get all of the porn, Lucifer? That's crazy. Dude, dude, you made these rules. Okay, but surely when I did that, I made it so I get some of the porn. I'm Ooh. God. Why would I? Oh, Sarah, Sarah. Um, yes, Mr. God. Uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. You remember Tyler Lucifer. He used to work mm -hmm. here. What up, loser? Um, you have a Popeye's napkin stuck to your face? Or do I? Y you do. You do. Anyway, Sarah, do just wanted to say I saw what you did with, you know, helping the Jews slay those five kings when they united against them. Super good job, super awesome. Wanted to thank you. Um, the what now? Oh, come on, don't be humble. You made those giant rocks fall out of the sky right on top of those... Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Certainly wasn't me missing the toilet on a two-drop, if that was what you're asking. Oh, that was gross. not what happened. That's gross. The gold makes the toilet slippery. That's true, it does. But what about when Joshua called for the sun and the moon and the sky to stand perfectly still? I mean, you nailed that, Sarah. I, uh... I'm, I might have been trying to get a better angle on a hemorrhoid. That oh, might have been my Double gross. It's from the gold. It's, it is from the gold. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Irritating. The point is, Sir Bear, you did a great job. Thank you, Mr. God. Thank you. Thank you. Now, as I was saying, Tyler, give me the peace stuff. You can have everything but the peace stuff. How's that? And that day, Joshua took Maketa and smote it with the edge of the sword. And the king thereof... He so Joshua just, like, them and all kills people the and within, he let takes the stuff? And takes the and stuff, yeah. To the king of For how many chapters he does he do A lot. A bunch of chapters. Cool. Joshua cool. passed from Maketa yeah. and all Israel with him. So how good is VR porn? Dude, so good. And nobody's what? talking about it. Nobody is talking about it. It's crazy. Like, it's nuts. That's how they should be advertised. It. it should be called the Oculus VR porn. The Oculus porn, absolutely, yes. Because, like, this is what we've been waiting for with VR. You know, like, oh, that's, that's what I want to do in the Matrix. Yes, exactly. What am I going to do? Fly? No, fuck you. No. I was going in the Matrix to fuck people, and this is fucking people in the Matrix. It's, it's fucking people in the Matrix. And people are like, oh, what about Beat Saber? Fuck Beat Saber. Fuck Beat Saber. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm going to fuck people. Okay. That said, major downside. Mm, disagree. But I, go ahead, what? Getting caught. Caught? What? How do you mean caught? Like, if someone walks in on you, you're wearing a VR headset, so you're just going to keep going. It's embarrassing. It's not really an issue for me. No, I know it's not an issue for you, Mr. I'm going to die by choking. I mean, it's for the rest of us, it's an issue. I mean, lock your door? Yeah, but what about, like, the UPS guy, you know? Does the UPS guy have a key to your house? No, I mean, like, you gotta sign shit for the UPS guy. No, because that's a roommate. I think you just live with the UPS guy. That's what you're describing. You know what I meant. Yeah, you, you live with a UPS guy. Got it. He left none remaining, according to all that he had done to Eglon, but destroyed it utterly and all the souls that were within it. Okay, everyone, that was a fantastic time period of killing. Really, really great killing all around. <laughs> Side note, I'd like to apologize for all the giants did not realize we'd be fighting quite so many literal giants. That one's on J-Man. That's all right. Yeah, literal literal giants. Literal, yeah, yeah literal. literally giants. So now that we're all done killing, we're going to draw lots to see who gets what. So, if everyone would just Sorry, line up uh, just a quick question. Yeah, bald bald guy. Okay. I mean a lot of qualities. Um anyway, uh doesn't God know 
how the drawing of lots is going to go? Could, couldn't he just tell us who gets what I mean, without he, doing that? Yeah, he, I guess he could. Right, so why doesn't he do that? Why doesn't he? I don't know. I, I try not to think about it. Okay, okay. Double or nothing, the Kohanes get west of the mountains. Again, we're both omniscient. You know that's not going to happen. Triple or nothing. Okay, fine. And finally, the Kohanes will get the land east of the mountains. Motherfucker. Hi, uh, sorry. Yeah, bald, quick, bald quick guy thing. again, yeah. Yeah, um, does the land east of the mountains have any oil? For the last time, none of this land has any oil. Ah, bummer. Yes, we've all agreed this is a huge bummer. Mm-hmm. Lou, 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 doing killing stuff. Killing stuff is my favorite stuff. Uh, Joshua? Ah, hey, Caleb, how's it going? Never better, young man, never better. Glad to hear it, old man, glad to Did hear it. Did I ever tell you about that one time when I was one of the spies? Oh, yeah, 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 Moses... that, that you were one of the spies that Moses sent. Yeah, you told me that. Well, anyway, I'm 85 now, but I'm uh -huh. as spry as I was at 45. Look at sure. me. Yeah. Oh, Whoop. that's that's great, Caleb. That's great. Punch me in the stomach. I'm I'm not going to punch you in the stomach. Uh, you're no it, fucking fun. Hey, did I ever tell you about the time that Moses told well, Moses me that told I you everything that you set your foot on you owned? Yes, yes, you've told me that. I exactly. So, uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, give me a giant mountain. I, I can take out those giants with one hand tied behind my back. <sighs> All right, Caleb, you can have giant mountain. Get up, boy. I'm awful grateful. Hey, don't sweat it. All right, boys. First one to kill a giant gets to fuck my daughter. Hooray! This is a weird book. Hi, Joshua? Yes. Can I help you? Hi, I'm, I'm one of the sons of Joseph, you know, uh -huh. the, the Joseph, like yeah. Lulu doing 10 stuff, 10 uh -huh. stuff is my favorite stuff, Joseph, yeah, yeah, that's my dad. Yeah. I know who Joseph is, yeah. Oh, okay, great, you do know who Joseph yeah. is, that's awesome, that's, you know, I hate to name drop, you know, uh -huh. like, help speed things up, anyways, uh -huh. look, there's been a little mistake, no big deal, uh, we, the sons of Joseph, we only got one lot in the whole land dispersal lottery thing you're doing. Yeah, everyone got one lot. What's the problem? It's just, you know, we thought, you know, <sighs> children of Joseph, the Joseph, maybe uh -huh. we get like two or maybe even, I don't know, am I crazy, like three lots? Like three mm. lots for the sons of Joseph? I don't want to be that guy, you know, but like sons of Joseph, you <sighs> know? Jo the Joseph? I mean, look, everyone gets one lot. Totally. Totally get it. Totally cool. Real yeah, quick, good. do you just, I have to ask, I'm so okay. sorry. Do you have like a manager or a supervisor or someone I could speak to? Maybe they knew my dad, Joseph, the look, Joseph. Look, sons of Joseph, if you want more land, go take it from the Giants, okay? Mm. Yeah, we are not really looking to move into a giant community you know uh -huh. it's just a little nothing against giants by the way no, we love no, giants. some of my best friends yeah. actually sure. are in fact i watched this documentary on netflix the other night about giants and okay I was just okay so, so aware take the land from the canaanites then mm, i oh i hate to do two nos in a row but the canaanites have chariots of iron so oh, yeah. like yeah. yeah you know oh yeah iron I'm sure you can kill the Canaanites even though they have chariots of iron after all. I mean, God is on our side. Call forward. Huh? Don't worry about it. Oh. Uh, Joshua, d do you have a second? Man, I missed the killing. Did not know there was going to be so much paperwork. Sign my name. Life away. Okay, yes. High Priest Cohen. How can I help you? Right. Uh, so about this order for cities of refuge? Uh-huh. Okay, so you have this down as, as people have to stay in that city until the high priest dies. Yeah. And then they can go home and nobody's allowed to revenge murder them. 
Yeah. So doesn't that mean a bunch of murderers go into these towns and then just have to murder somebody else to go home? Hmm. Oh, that's fine. You'll be fine. Okay. Lou, Lou, Lou. Doing altar stuff. Altar stuff is my favorite stuff. Lou, Lou, Lou. Howdy, neighbor. Seriously? Hi, Ed. How's it going? Uh, good, good. Can't help but notice you're building an altar there. Building an altar? Yeah, I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to have to declare war against you. What? Why? Well, you remember the thing with the Peor? I do. And then again with A-Chan? That guy had like a, a carpet, right? Yeah, 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 the carpet. The point is, mm-hmm. better safe than sorry on the old Iding Smay thing, you know? Okay. Okay, fair point. But this altar is actually not for sacrificing animals. This altar is for our friendship, you and I. You built an altar to our friendship. I did, yes. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. W- what's it called? Uh, it's called... Ed? The altar. The altar to our friendship that you built is called Ed the altar. That is what I said. Yes. I love it! This is in the book. Yes, yes it is. Yep. Okay, everybody listen up. I, Joshua, you know me, some of you like me. I'm old now, and soon I am going to die. Well, damn, that was fast. Yeah, the last five chapters are pretty much all lists. I figured we could just... Anyway, run. anyway, uh, get out there. Fight your enemies. You'll never lose... And you'll always win. Bring one home for the Gipper. Mm. Okay, I feel like that's not going to turn out to be true at all. Okay, also, also, you know, let me finish. Never marry any of the women you conquer, because they'll they'll be like they'll be like thorns in your eyes. Ha! Sounds like my wife. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. <laughs> <Right>? Yeah, <laughs> nice. So that joke is new right now and, and really funny. Uh, anyway, uh, keep on believing in God, just, just our God, or, or else, you know, you know, the bad stuff happens. Super best friend promise to only worship God. We super, we super best, best friend, friend promise, promise to, to only worship God. God. Got it. All right. I'm going to go die now. And that's Joshua. I guess. Hmm. Not that much to it, is there? Like, no. Like, moral wise. No. I mean, Joshua will kick your ass. No, that's true. He will. Yeah, but is there really like a, a way to sum that up? You know what I'm saying? To you know, sum like up a, Joshua kicking ass? I yeah, I think so. Hit it, Anna. Joshua, Joshua, the chess idol. Gonna people actually do He's like a Jedi and that the story Isn't factually true Like Superman he's invincible He wins every battle But unlike the man of steel He kills the women and cattle He's the Hulk with those hammer And a magical arc The sun is his permission Before it's allowed to get dark Like a bronze age Jackie Chan He's always up to some shit Like his notorious chorus Of nuclear trumpets He's the Bible's first lever With triple S skill He never
the army of the Jews after all their arcane and nights in need of abuse. You serve God well, scouting and not being honest. So you lead the Hebrews to the land that God promised. Your ambitions are grand, your intentions extortionate. So God given powers of land reapportionment. You'll be crossing a river, but you won't need a wait for the city of A's diss track to come out. We're going to take a break for a while, but we'll be back soon with even more Bible Peace Theater. Before we save and quit tonight, I wanted to let you know that, yes, the general admission tickets for our L.A. show are sold out. And yes, the VIP tickets are sold out, but there are still a couple of Platinum Night tickets available. So if you'd like a front row seat, a private hangout with the crew, and a fancy dinner slash game night with us the night before, check the show notes and do it quick. You already fucked around long enough to miss out on all the other tickets. Don't fuck this up, too. Anyway, that's all the blast movie we've got for you tonight. We'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show's Hot Friend God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half-sister show, Citation Needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, the RSS feed would reject this episode like a bad organ if I neglected to thank Heath Enright for making a foray into the world outside of his virtual porn to be here with us today. I need to thank the lovely Lucinda Illusions for at least pretending to buy the No Honey, I Have to Be in a Locked Room by Myself with this VR stuff or I'll step on a cat excuse. And I need to thank Eli Bosnick for getting motion sickness in VR because otherwise we would never see him again. Also want to thank Don Ford, voice of fantasy and adventure for reasons that have nothing to do with virtual porn. Also want to thank Hunter for providing this week's Farnsworth quote. Got a bit of a crossover going with Gam's theme, but you know what? Holy shit, how could I not use one about serenading heathens on the episode with that Joshua song on it, right? And of course, speaking of which, I need to thank Anna Bosnick for being way too good for this fucking show. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best people, Ken, Aaron, Derek, Christopher, Brian, Matthew, Parker, Chris, Bad Shepherd, Pod, Laura, Phoenix, Evan, Lee, Mark, Stu, Scott, Angry German, Todd with three Ds, Dylan, Casey, Mike, and that guy with the SGU tattoo. Ken, Aaron, Derek, Christopher, Brian, Matthew, and Parker, who have to list their heights both with and without an erection. Chris, Bad Shepherd, Pod, Laura, Phoenix, Evan, Lee, Mark, and Stu are so bright the flashlight is afraid to go into the basement without them. And Scott, Angry, German, Todd with three Ds, Dylan, Casey, Mike, and that guy with the SGU tattoo whose tongues could make an entire language orgasm. Together, these 22 people, pods, and fantasy creatures helped us renew for the 2020 season by giving us money. Not everybody has the sweet money-giving skills it takes to give us money, but if you think you're up to the challenge, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode. Like, seriously, there's a whole headline in this episode that you didn't hear because you're not a patron. Unless you're a patron, which case you did hear it. Way to go. Or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingadius.com. And if you'd like to help, but you're saving all your money for your VR porn, I get it. In the meantime, you can help us a ton by leaving a five-star review wherever you can, telling a friend about the show, and following at PIATPod on Twitter. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson handles our social media, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingadius.com.
Now I want to send out the weirdest fucking fruit baskets of shit nobody eats. <laughs> <laughs> Lemons and tomatoes, motherfucker. Tomatoes, yeah. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.